Hi there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. We are going to be discussing some products that I've been trying recently. Some of these are really great. Some of them are okay, and some of them I wish I never tried. We're gonna have eight different products from four different brands, but before we get into that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. If you've been here before, you know I love to learn, and Skillshare helps me do that. It is an online learning community with classes at every level from beginner to advanced, whatever your creative passions, or you may even discover new passions through Skillshare. This month I took a class called Plants at Home, Uplift Your Spirit in Your Space by Christopher Griffin. I really love to garden and growing fruits and vegetables, but I also want to make my home look really nice with some indoor plants. And this class was wonderful. It gave you all the reasons why having plants in your home is good, how to assess where to locate them in your home, and also his beginner-friendly plant recommendations because I am trying to be a good plant mom and I want to keep my plants alive. I love that the Skillshare classes are ad free so my learning is never interrupted and that they're always adding new premium classes so I can continue to be a lifelong learner. And the first thousand people to use the link in my description box will get a free one month trial to Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. And thank you again to Skillshare. Now let's get back to the video. The first brand we're gonna talk about is Good Faith and we will be talking about two of their products. They reached out to me and offered to send me some of their skincare products. These products were gifted to me. I'm gonna talk to you about two of their products that I did really enjoy. The first one we're going to talk about is their gentle cleanser with vitamin E. So I've been using this product daily and I'm actually almost out of it. Surfactants in here are cocomito propyl bentane and sodium methyl cocal tarate. These are considered to be more gentle cleansers. I do like that there's at least two of them. With these two types of surfactants, I feel like they do thoroughly cleanse the face, but it does not leave your skin feeling extra dry or that squeaky clean feeling. If you are wearing a lot of makeup, you will definitely need to use a makeup cleanser, but on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm wearing minimal or no makeup, this does work really well on its own. The one con that I have with this product, which also is kind of a pro, but let me get into that, is this pump right here with this nozzle. It works really well because you don't over dispense product. It gives you a small amount so you can control how much cleanser that you are using. But I will also say that this does get clogged really easily. And so sometimes when you use it, if it's clogged, it'll like shoot off to the side. So that's the one con it does have. And to alleviate that, I do kind of have to like pick out the dried up cleanser on the nozzle. I do really like this cleanser overall. The other product I want to tell you about is the smoothing eye cream with caffeine. What I really like about this eye cream is that not only does it absorb very quickly, it is light enough that I can wear it during the day and it doesn't affect my makeup application or make me feel super greasy under my eyes when I'm going about my business. Sometimes with really heavy eye creams, if you go to put on any concealer over it, it does kind of slip slide and doesn't work nicely with the concealer, but this one does work really well because it does absorb quickly. It has a lot of humectants in there. You have butylene glycol, you have glycerin, propendiol, there's sodium hyaluronate, so lots of good things. And then for emollients, you have shea butter, caprylic capric triglyceride, there's squalane in here. So there's a lot of good ingredients to help hydrate the under eye. This product, like the other product, has the nice little pump that dispenses the appropriate amount of product you need. This one, however, does not get clogged, so that's very nice. I think having the pump for the eye cream is unique. I haven't seen a lot that are like that. Usually I either see a jar type of product, which you know you have to dip your fingers into and that's not always pleasant, or it's a squeezy tube with a direct eye applicator. I like this because it does also, again, give you control of how much product you're dispensing. These two products have been my favorite from the line. I, again, I was sent these for free. These products I really like and that's why I wanted to share them with you. We're gonna move on to our next brand, which is R.E.M. Beauty, that's Ariana Grande's line. I bought three products from them. I'm gonna tell you about two. I honestly haven't given the other one enough where I have a fully formed opinion on it yet. The first one we're gonna talk about is the matte liquid eyeshadows. I have the luster one. Like I said, I haven't tried it enough, so I don't have a fully formed opinion on that yet. But this product is really great 
for an all over look, day to day makeup, just an all over eyeshadow look. You don't need very much of it. It is very liquidy, so it's not very thick and creamy. I find that it doesn't crease up a lot and it's very easy to apply. My go-to brush for this is the Luxie 235 brush. I like this brush for liquid and cream shadows because it is flatter, but it is fluffy enough that it can blend everything out. And this one does blend out really well. I also like that this is buildable. If you wanna increase the pigmentation, you can add it and it's gonna play nicely with the eyeshadow that you've already put on underneath. The one that I am wearing today is called Nevermind. As you can see, it's just kinda of like a taupey color. All of the matte eyeshadows are all some kind of neutral color, so this will work really well for a day-to-day -day eyeshadow look. The second product we're gonna talk about is the matte lipstick. Now, this one was spoken about a lot because it's kind of shaped like a little spaceship, or, well, let's just say some other people have very good imaginations. I will leave it at that. I haven't worn the matte bullet style lipstick in a long time. I want to say like 2015, 2016 era because most of the time they're very drying. They pick up on those little dry patches on your lips, which never looks cute. But I decided I was going to give this one a try and I was pleasantly surprised. It definitely has that matte look to it. I am wearing it today in the shade Drive-In Movie but it doesn't feel overly dry when you're applying it. It doesn't drag on the skin. It applies very pigmented and smooth, and it is very comfortable to wear. So this was a very pleasant surprise. I did not expect to like this lipstick as much as I did, and I actually wear it quite frequently. The third brand we're gonna talk about is Jaclyn Hill, and you might have already seen my video where I reviewed both of these products in depth, if you want to learn a lot more about them, I will link both of those videos in the cards above. But first, we will talk about the concealer. So the concealer I am not a fan of. This is the Faux Filler Concealer. I guess it's supposed to make you look like you got filler. But I have a few problems with this. There are not enough humectants in this product, so if you have dry under eyes, it's going to feel even more dry. And the concealer also doesn't have very much coverage either so it's not going to cover up those spots if you have significantly dark under eyes this is also not going to help you honestly the way that i prefer to use this right now is as an eye primer it reminds me a lot of the urban decay eyeshadow potion in that it has a more dimethicone texture but for me personally i wouldn't purchase this concealer again i found that the price point was pretty high for the payoff that you were getting from this product. And then the other product that she had released around the same time was the Skin Tint. This was the one I was surprised that I did enjoy. Would I purchase it again? Maybe not. But I really like it for day to day when I want a little bit of coverage, make it look like I'm not wearing makeup, but I am wearing makeup. It doesn't cover up significantly red spots. I know on my nose earlier when I was using it, it I could definitely see the red underneath. If you have freckles though, this would be really nice because you could let your freckles show through. It's called a tinted moisturizer, but it definitely would not hydrate your skin enough where I would count it as a moisturizer. I definitely have to use this with a hydrating primer or a very good moisturizer underneath. The last brand we're gonna talk about is CoverGirl. So the first product we're gonna talk about, and this is my least favorite product that I have tried out recently, is the Clean Press Powder for Normal Skin. The actual function of it, putting it on, it does give you a little bit of color. It's not overly dry feeling, but the thing that is most off-putting about this product is the smell. It has the strongest perfumey, like, the luxury makeup, you know that really perfumey smell that some makeup products have? This is what this has, and I feel like it's so unnecessary. And I'm not someone who's super sensitive to smells. Usually after I'm done applying my makeup and I use like a really heavily perfumed product, it will dissipate. This one, however, at least an hour later, I could still smell it on my face. And it was even worse because at the time, I was wearing a mask to work every day and I could just smell it. No, no, no. I even let this air out on my vanity so I could try to help some of that smell go away and it did nothing. It still smells just as strong as it did when I first opened it. I don't, so I don't think I will be able to use this product because 
I just cannot get past the smell. The other thing that really threw me off with this is that CoverGirl went through this whole rebranding where they were leaving bunnies certified cruelty free and a lot of their products say that they're clean. This one also says that they're clean. If you've watched my channel, you know that the word clean has no legal definition. There's not even really a standardized definition. I feel all these brands and retailers just make up a list of banned ingredients and that's how they figure it out. I was very surprised to see on the packaging, on the ingredients list, from a product that says the word clean and labels itself as clean, that it contains a mineral oil, methyl paraben, and propyl paraben. I have no issues with any of these three ingredients whatsoever, but typically in most lines that are labeled as clean or retailers that label them as clean, these ingredients are usually on the no-no list. So this just further cemented in my head that the term clean really does have no meaning whatsoever, not even to the brands that use it. So that product was just a big flop for me overall. The next product from CoverGirl that we're talking about is their Clean Fresh Hydrating Concealer. So this one as well, like its name, it is very hydrating. When you put it on, it is very liquidy feeling. It's very comfortable. The thing about this though, is that this is a super lightweight coverage concealer. This is not gonna cover texture at all. It is not substantial enough to do that. It does have some color to it where it will even out skin tone, but it is not strong enough that if you have very, very dark under eyes, that this is gonna significantly help. This one works well day to day, no foundation, this light foundation, medium coverage foundation. If I use a full coverage foundation, this is not the product that I would use. This concealer is an okay product to me. It just depends on what your needs are out of your concealer. So one thing that was kind of weird for me on the ingredients list, I don't know if this is a typo, but it said that it was infused with aloe extract and coconut milk. When I look on the ingredients list, that is nowhere to be found. It does not say that. But also on the ingredients list, I don't see any iron oxides. Iron oxides are typically red, yellow, brown. These are the colorants that make up your complexion products. Pretty much every single one of them is going to have some form of iron oxide in them. And that was also not listed on the ingredients list. This ingredients list was very, very small. So if those extracts that they mentioned are not listed, those would be what's referred to as an incidental ingredient that doesn't have to get listed. But if they're that insignificant to where they're not listed, they probably shouldn't be in the description. So that was very confusing. So that's where I had a hard time with the ingredients list. Unfortunately, this is all the packaging it comes from. As you can see, it has the barcode on here. So there was no outer packaging for me to look at an ingredients list on. So all I have to go off of is what's on the website. But I think this concealer is a decent concealer. Let me know down below what products you want me to try out. I am trying to try different brands of products, maybe ones that people haven't heard before. So that way I can share new things that I'm finding with you all. And make sure you click the subscribe button if you want to learn more about the science behind your makeup and skincare. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!